everybody and welcome today i'll show you how to use bcrypt to safely store passwords in your relational database today i'll use sqlite 3 but you can use any other uh, sql like technology uh, i'll be using connects the connects package to interact with the database and i have a simple um, express service set up here uh, that's all the code for it um, just so I can interact uh, with the database and show you and create two endpoints, the register and the login one. I'll also be using Postman to send the requests um, to the database. But obviously, if in a real app, you would use uh, the browser. So starting off, uh, don't say, I'll First of all, we'll need to install uh, the bcrypt package. I'll be using bcrypt.js. You can just Google bcrypt.js. It's the first thing that comes up. Uh, this is the package. I'll just copy this and install it. Okay, so we'll have two routes. Uh, the login and the register route. This would be registered, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'll also be using the DB browser for SQLite 3 to in to just show you that the data is going into the tables. This database only has two columns and one table the table is named users and the columns are the email and the hash uh, this is the code for the, this is the sql query for creating the table and as you can see there's nothing in the table right now so first of all let's just start the server uh, the api that is we have bcrypt installed so let's import the uh, the bcrypt package right here i'll change this to a const so we got bcrypt so when a user registers, uh, they'll send to our register endpoint the email and the password. Also, another thing I forgot to mention is, well, I did mention is that uh, the bcrypt hash function is an async function. You can read more about it right here. Uh, no, not here. Yeah, there's a sync function, hash sync, and there's an async one which is just hash. We'll be using the async one, obviously, since we want multiple users to be able to register at the same time without the server being blocked. So we'll put all of the code inside of the routes, inside of a try and catch block. I'll also const log the error if there is one. And I'll send a response of something broke but you could obviously make this more detail and actually send a proper response, uh, proper response uh, error message. Okay, so since we're using async um, functions from bcrypt and we're also using the connects um, functions that also return promises and they are async, we will make this uh, route function async, but obviously you could put all of this into a separate function or something and do it that way, whatever you prefer. Obviously, I'm just showing a very simple example here. So since we get the email and the password from the request body at this endpoint, uh, what the next thing we need to do is create a hash of the password to store in the database. So define the hash and say bcrypt hash and then password and we can salt it 10 times. Uh, the higher this salt number is, the more times uh, the password here gets hashed so technically it's safer but the higher the number also the slower the function becomes so you know you can weigh out the pros and cons there afterwards what we want to do is insert the hash and the email into the database so we'll await db dot not db so into the users table we want to insert the email of email and the password of password obviously. So after, oh no, we don't actually, there is no password field. Uh, there is only a hash field. So a user sends a, you know, clicks the register button. They send an email and the password to our register endpoint. We hash the password using bcrypt. We also await this uh, bcrypt uh, hash function. Since it, it is an async function, it returns uh, it's a, it's a promise so if we don't await it here it will just return a pending promise that will be pending forever so we need to await the function anyway so after that we get a, a hash so we have the email and the hash 
we then insert the email and the hash into the database. Afterwards, we'll send a response with the status 200 and the message of all good, right? All good. So the registration went successfully. Okay, let's now test this out. So HTTP, um, this, um, this, this, this URL sort of works. Um, you could type localhost here or this and then slash register. And then we'll go to the body. It will be JSON that we want to send. We also want to send a post request. So in here, we'll put an email of uh, email at uh, email.com and we want to put a password of test right so if we send this request we'll get a all good and if we check in the database the email at email.com and the hash are there okay so the registration route does work if you don't send a password obviously you'll get an error something broke and we'll get the error here and nothing will be put into the database. So let's move on to the login route. So right now we have a route that allows users to register. So for the login route, we'll also make the function in it async. We'll just copy this code and remove this part since we don't really need that. So this part is the same. The user will send an email and a password. Uh, afterwards, what we're going to do is get the user from the database. So what we're going to do is define a user and await DB uh, and then from the users table, we want to select the first once everything from the um, where the email is equal to the email that the user provided. So what happens here is from the users table, we want to select the first row where the email equals to the email from the request body. Afterwards, what we want to do is check. So if the user um, exists, so if this returns something, it's not on, you know, undefined or something if it if there is a user it, if it did select a row then what we want to do is check if the password that they send along with the email is correct so what we're going to do here is say uh, const um, valid pass you can name this variable anything i'll just name it valid pass for just because it's clear what we want to do is uh, say it is await bcrypt dot compare so what we want to do here is compare the password and the user the hash. So here we selected the email and we also selected the hash that goes along with this email. So the hash of the password that we put in when the user registered. So this is going to return a true or a false, this right here. So what we want to do here is then say if the password is valid, we want to respond status 200. Um, we want to send back valid email and password, right? So everything is valid and they locked it. Obviously in a real app, you'll have like, you respond with like a cookie or you'll send a JSON web token, um, to use for, for authentication for, for later, there's, you know, stuff like that. Else, so if the password was not valid, you can, will respond with uh, uh, wrong pass, right? the password wasn't valid it was, it was wrong also here if the user does not exist we can respond with um, stasis 404 um, user not found right because you know there's, there's no user in the users table with that email so the user does not exist so right now if we send a request to the login um, route and we just send like an email nothing else obviously it'll return something broke because we also need to send a password so we send an email and a password and the password is uh test if i remember correctly valid email and password if we say test one which is incorrect 
the wrong password if we change the email user not found that's about it that's uh, the simplest possible way to implement um, authentication and password storing with bcrypt thank you for watching i hope you learned something new and bye bye